Task 1 talks about demonstrating an understanding of the FAZE Act as a regulatory framework. Task 1 has four qualifying criteria. Let's look at Task 1, Qualifying Criteria 1. Describe the FAZE Act and subordinate legislation. The Financial Advisory and Intermediary Services Act, or the FAZE Act for short, was introduced in 2002 and became effective on 30 September 2004. Under the FAZE Act, all institutions and persons who wish to render financial services have to obtain authorization from the regulator before they could render such financial services to the public. The main aim of the FAZE Act is to protect consumers of the financial products against such institutions and persons when it comes to the rendering of financial services. The responsible regulator is the Financial Sector Conduct Authority, or the FSCA for short. The FSCA is headed by a commissioner. Prior to the FSCA, the regulator for non-banking financial services used to be known as the Financial Services Board or FSB for short. The FSB was headed by a registrar. Please note that in these videos, when we refer to the office of the FSCA, we are also referring to the commissioner, the registrar, and even the authority. We use these words interchangeably to refer to the regulator. The FASE Act is thought to be a market conduct regulation. Market conduct regulation? What does that mean? Well, the FASE Act regulates the business of all financial services providers who give advice or provide intermediary services to clients. It does this by setting minimum standards for authorized financial services providers for when they interact with clients. The FASE Act follows a functional approach and not an institutional approach. This means that the Act regulates certain functions across institutions such as insurance companies, brokerages and banks. An institutional approach, on the other hand, focuses on specific institutions, like the Banks Act, for example, which only regulates banks. Therefore, the function of providing financial services across the various institutions is one that is regulated by the FASE Act. Think of the FASE Act as the big brother of financial services. It's there to protect consumers. The FASE Act has two clear purposes. One, to professionalize the financial services sector. And two, to protect consumers. For example, ensuring that the insurance industry does not charge consumers inflated premiums. Under the FASE Act, as from 30 September 2004, no one should act as a financial services provider or an FSP for short, without a license. Equally, no one should act as a representative unless that person is appointed by an authorized FSP. Also, an authorized FSP may only conduct financial services related business with an FSP that is licensed. So then, if an unauthorized FSP or representative concludes a transaction with a client, such a transaction will lack authority. Put simply, under the FASE Act, if an unauthorized FSP concludes a transaction with a client, that transaction is not valid and will not be enforceable in law. Over and above the FASE Act, there are several subordinate legislations. These help to regulate the conduct of FSPs and include 1. The General Code of Conduct for Authorized Financial Services Providers and Representatives 2. The Determination of Fit and Proper Requirements for Financial Services Providers 
3. Board notices and 4. Guidance notes. The Phase Act and subordinate legislations talk about role players who help to enforce its rules. Let us briefly mention some of these role players. Let's start with the FSCA, the Financial Sector Conduct Authority or FSCA for short, has replaced the old FSB. In a way, the FSCA is there to police the Phase Act and is responsible for market conduct, market efficiency and integrity as well as consumer education. It regulates the non-banking side of financial services such as insurance services. The FSCA is headed up by a commissioner. Sometimes the words registrar or authority are used to refer to the FSCA or the commissioner. Next, we have financial services providers or FSPs for short. These are the financial institutions that are authorized by the FSCA to sell financial services. And by authorized, we mean licensed. The financial services that an FSP can provide to clients include intermediary services and or giving advice. An FSP may be a legal entity or a one-person business operating in his or her own name. FSPs are fully responsible for implementing and maintaining compliance with the Phase Act and relevant codes of conduct. The next point is an important one. Some financial services companies do not have to become licensed under the Phase Act. For example, FSPs who lend money may need to become an authorized credit provider under the National Credit Act. Next, we have key individuals, or KIs for short, who are employed by FSPs to ensure compliance with the Phase Act. They are responsible for the management and oversight of the business. Every FSP must have someone fulfilling the role of a key individual. For one-person businesses, the owner will be the FSP and act as a key individual. Next, we have representatives, or reps for short, who are employed by FSPs to sell financial services to clients. For purposes of the Phase Act, reps include call center agents, brokers, consultants, financial planners, financial advisors, investment advisors, and insurance agents. It's important to note that Reps are not people who provide clerical, technical, administrative, legal, or related services. This relates to instances where advice is not given to a client, especially if 1. No judgment is required. 2. The information provided does not lead a client to a transaction. And 3. Information provided is factually objective, like describing a product's features. Reps must be able to provide proof to clients that they are authorized to act on behalf of an FSP. Next, we have compliance officers, who are employed or contracted by FSPs to help with compliance matters as required by the Phase Act. Compliance forms part of an FSP's risk management processes, and these processes are supervised by the compliance officer. If an FSP has more than one key individual or one or more representatives, then that FSP must appoint a compliance officer. This means that once an FSP adds another key individual or appoints one or more reps, then that FSP must appoint a compliance officer. For a one-person business, the owner who also serves as the key individual 
may oversee his or her own compliance. In this case, the owner does not become a compliance officer, but can report directly to the FSCA on compliance matters without appointing a compliance officer. And then we have the face ombud. The ombud for financial services providers, or the face ombud for short, resolves complaints submitted by clients about an FSP and or its reps. This service that is provided by the face ombud is free to aggrieved clients. Let us now go through a few questions to test our knowledge. What does FACE stand for? What about Financial Advice Information Services? No. What about Finance Act Information Services? No. What about Financial Advisory and Intermediary Services? Yes. Which of the following is not one of the main objectives of the FASE Act? What about to ensure that the insurance industry does not charge inflated premiums? Yes. What about to ensure customers are treated fairly? Yes. What about to ensure that all the financial service providers sell different products? No. What is the regulatory body of the FASE Act? What about the FASE Ombud? No. The FACE Ombud resolves complaints submitted by clients about an FSP and or its reps. What about the Financial Service Conduct Authority, the FSCA for short? Yes. Which of the following statements is false? A key individual may function both as an FSP and a key individual. True. Compliance officers are appointed by the FSCA to monitor compliance as required by the FASE Act. False. Compliance officers are not appointed by the FSCA. They are appointed by FSPs. The FSCA approves the compliance officers that are appointed by the FSPs. Which of the following statements is false? A functional approach focuses on specific institutions. False. A functional approach means the FASE Act regulates certain functions across institutions such as insurance companies, brokerages, and banks. True. Which of the following statements is false? The FASE Act applies only to FSPs who give advice in relation to financial products. False. The FASE Act applies to FSPs who give advice or provide intermediary services to clients. True. We hope you enjoyed the video and learnt a lot. Please make sure to check out our other RE videos.